Hello, my friends. How are you? Welcome to 30 Albums for 30 Years, a special global pop edition. I am your host, Jay Sweet. And in today's episode, we're going to learn about the music of Jamaica. But before we learn about the music, let's learn a little bit about the country itself. Now, the first Jamaicans were the Taino Indians, who settled around the year 600. Then Christopher Columbus was the first European to step foot in Jamaica. And by 1510, the Spanish settled there. Within 50 years of the Spanish conquest, the Taino Indians were wiped out after being used first as slaves. Then in 1655, British naval forces captured Jamaica from the Spanish, and during this period, many West African slaves owned by the Spanish escaped into the Jamaican hills. These escaped slaves became known as Maroons. Now, Jamaican slaves lived under some of the most cruel conditions, and the life expectancy of a West African Jamaican slave was only seven years. The Jamaican slave trade is said to have drawn between 10 and 20 million Africans from their homeland, with approximately 600,000 coming to Jamaica, one of the largest importers of slaves at the time. That was between 1533 and 1807. Then in 1807, the slave trade was abolished, and by 1838, Jamaican slaves were emancipated and mainly indoctrinated into Catholicism. Now, many ethnic and religious groups sought solace in Jamaica, including Jewish people and the people of the Middle East, India, and China, and they all brought their own cultural traditions to the islands. After years of dissatisfaction with the British crown colonial system, Jamaica gained its independence in 1962 after 300 years of British rule. Okay, so let's get into the music, and the first style we're going to discuss is mento music, M-E-N-T-O. Mento is a Jamaican folk style that predates ska and reggae music, and it is often characterized as a fusion of African music and European music. The instrumentation often included an acoustic guitar, banjos, hand drums, and an instrument known as the rumba box. The rumba box is a wood box with sound holes cut in the center of it. Across the holes, several metal strips are tuned to different pitches and plucked to produce a bass line for the music. Lyrically, mento music often dealt with social and political issues, but in a light-hearted and humorous way. The heyday for mento recordings took place in the 1950s. One of the more popular mento artists was Lord Fly. Lord Fly was really Roderick McDonald, a popular Jamaican mento musician and comedic performer born in Jamaica in 1905, and he died in 1957. But in his short life, he did gain prominence as a mento artist, which is a genre that is generally considered Jamaica's original popular music. His songs were often filled with humor, wordplay, and clever social commentary. In this medley, take notice of the heavy blend of percussion along with piano, bass, and trumpet. So here we have Lord Fly's medley of Jamaican mentos with Dan Williams and his orchestra. I hope you enjoy. This next tune is called Woman's Smarter by the Jolly Boys. It's a mento tune with lyrics that talk about how women are smarter than men in every way. It also discusses how they can be crafty and sneaky. At one point, the narrator thought his woman was birthing his child till he saw it and realized it had blue eyes and looked Portuguese. Take notice of the banjo as the lead instrument, along with the bongo drums, the guitar, and of course the rumba box. Listen for the upbeat rhythms in the guitar. The Jolly Boys formed in 1955 and came to fame in the early 1960s, but they did not record commercially until 1977, and their final commercial recording came in 2014. So check it out, the Jolly Boys' Women's Smarter. So let's shift gears here and talk about ska music. Ska music became popular in Jamaica in the 1950s and the 1960s. 
It's often characterized as a fusion of mento, calypso, jazz, and R&B music. And the 1960s American R&B started to dominate Jamaica's uh, musical tastes. And ska included a new usage of American instrumentation from the swing era, 1920s, 1930s, into the 1940s, which includes saxophones and brass like trumpets and trombones, drums, piano, electric guitar, and acoustic bass. Now, ska is a dance-oriented music with repetitive themes and a heavy usage of improvisation. Another key characteristic is the use of the skank rhythm. The skank rhythm offers off-beat syncopations on every beat, so it's playing on the upbeat. Now, ska began to fall out of favor in Jamaica with the popularity of reggae in the 1970s. The Scatolites were a popular ska band from Jamaica that played from 1963 to 1965 before taking their first break. They also played on records by other Jamaican artists, including ska legend Prince Buster, and they later backed Bob Marley and the Whalers on their first single, Simmer Down. One of the group's founding members was trombonist Don Drummond, who was arrested for murdering his girlfriend on New Year's Day 1965. He died in Bellevue Asylum in Kingston in 1969. After breaking up in August of 1965, the group split up into two factions, Rolando Alfonso and the Soul Vendors and Tommy McCook and the Supersonics. The group then reunited beginning in 1974, and over time there have been around two dozen members of the Scatolites. One of their popular songs was The Guns of Navarone, and they recorded it several times. Check out the tight horns, the skank offbeat rhythms, and the heavy usage of improvisation, which is a characteristic of jazz, of course. The song was inspired by the 1961 soundtrack of the Academy Award nominated movie with the same name, The Guns of Navarone, which featured actor Gregory Peck. Check it out. Okay, so let's now talk about rock, steady music, and the Rude Boys movement. In 1962, as mentioned in the introduction, Jamaica gained its independence from Great Britain, and many Jamaicans were living in poverty. Young men, known as Rude Boys, began a countercultural, anti-government movement that supplied these street gangs with money and weapons, and they did this around election periods to disrupt the Jamaican government. Rocksteady became the unofficial music of the Rude Boys movement, and it began to find popularity between 1966 through 1968. It bridged the gap between ska music and reggae music. Rocksteady blended elements of jazz and ska, R&B, mento, calypso, and Motown. The music often featured slower tempos than ska, and this allowed for more space for the bass players to explore and the instrument became more heavily featured. The bass line is very important in rock steady music. The lead guitar line often doubles that bass line. And lyrically, some of the songs were inspired by the Rastafarian movement and can be political in nature. In order to fully understand Jamaican music and Jamaican culture, it's important to understand the Rastafarian movement. Rastas believe in Jah, which is another name for God, according to the Old Testament. Although commonalities exist between Rastafarianism and Judeo-Christian principles, there are also distinct differences. Rastafarians believe in oneness with humanity and equality. Historically, followers wanted to send black people from the Americas back to Africa based on their belief that Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie was the Black Messiah. Rastafarians believe in the concept of a balanced life, so they eat natural foods and are mostly vegan. Rastafarians also do not drink alcohol, but do partake in cannabis use.
Okay, so now let's check out a Rocksteady tune called Rocksteady by Alton Ellis. Raised in a musical family in Trenchtown, Jamaica in 1960, Ellis began singing and recording hits in the R&B style in a duo called Alton and Eddie that was Eddie Perkins. Then Perkins moved to the US and Ellis continued performing with various groups and then began recording with his own groups called Alton Ellis and the Flames. In 1967, he recorded the song Rock Steady, the first song to use the genre's name. Ellis remained active throughout the early 2000s and died of cancer in 2008. Take notice of the prominent bass line, skank rhythms, and more relaxed tempos. Rock steady. The most known form of Jamaican music is reggae music, and reggae shares many of the same principles as rock steady. The main difference seems to be a deeper focus on American R&B vocalizations, and often the lyrics are more political in nature. After the release of the 1972 cult film, The Harder They Come, local Jamaican music found a deeper international appeal, and reggae music became the popular music of Jamaica. The movie features Jamaican music legend Jimmy Cliff in the starring role in which he plays a struggling musician who falls into the life of crime. The soundtrack also features the music of Toots and the Maytals, along with other prominent reggae and Jamaican artists. This next track is called Do the Reggae, but it's spelled as R-A-G-G-A-Y, and it was a recording by Toots and the Maytals. Toots and the Maytals, headed by Toots, Hibbert, are one of the true pioneering groups of reggae music. The group formed in the early 1960s, and after blending ska and rock steady, they released the 1968 single, Do the Reggae, the first song to use the word reggae, which helped to identify the genre. While it is not necessarily the group's finest songs, in my opinion, it is important historically. So check it out, and let's do the reggae. Next up is Jimmy Cliff's The Harder They Come. Jimmy Cliff's music is a blend of ska, rock steady, and reggae. Cliff had his first hit at the age of 14 with Hurricane Hattie. And then more hits followed. In 1964, Jimmy Cliff represented Jamaica at the World's Fair in New York. In 1967, he released the album Hard Road to Travel, his international debut which received excellent reviews. His fame increased significantly when he starred in the film The Harder They Come, and the soundtrack became widely important to the introduction of Jamaica's music internationally. In 1975, after an appearance on Saturday Night Live, Cliff took a hiatus and traveled to Africa and converted to Islam. In the early 1980s, Jimmy Cliff returned to the music scene. The song, The Harder They Come, has all of the elements of a great reggae tune, which includes an infectious groove, thought-provoking lyrics, fine rhythms, great vocals, and of course, a strong bass line. Jimmy Cliff's The Harder They Come. Easily the most recognizable and impactful Jamaican musician was Bob Marley. By fusing rock steady and ska music early on, Marley became one of the pioneers of reggae music. Born in Nine Mile, Jamaica, his father was a military man, and his father died when Bob Marley was only 10 years old, so his mom remarried and the family moved to Trenchtown, Kingston. As a youth, Marley and childhood friend Bunny Whaler began playing music. Then in Trenchtown, they hooked up with Peter Tosh to form the group, The Whalers. In 1964, the group recorded Simmer Down, which became a Jamaican hit. 
The message of the song was an attempt to cool down the violence in Kingston. The backing group on the recording is the Scatolites, and Simmer Down showcases the Whalers' ska roots blended with political lyrics associated with rock steady music. Simmer Down. Let's learn a little bit more about Bob Marley. In 1966, Marley married singer Rita Anderson and they moved to Wilmington, Delaware. Bob Marley began working in the DuPont Labs as an assistant and then later as a forklift operator for Chrysler Motors. And he then returned to Jamaica, became interested in Rastafarian beliefs and grew his signature dreadlocks. By the late 1960s, reggae music had begun to gain some popularity, moving the music away from the genres of ska and rock steady. So between 1968 through 1972, the Whalers and Rita Marley recut some of their older material to fit the reggae trends better. In 1972, he signs with Island Records and began making historic albums such as Catch a Fire and Burnin'. But infighting within the group led to a breakup of the Whalers. And in 1974, Marley continued the group as Bob Marley and the Whalers, and he scored his first major hit with No Woman, No Cry. During that time, Marley became more politically outspoken and there was a plot to assassinate him. In 1976, a gunman broke into his home and the singer, his wife, and his manager and friend Don Taylor were all shot and wounded, but they did all survive. One of Bob Marley's signature songs is One Love, which was first released as a ska song in 1965 by Marley and the Wailing Wailers, and then recorded in 1971 for Marley's album African Herbsman, under the name All in One. But the signature version of the song comes from a 1977 recording for the album Exodus, under the title One Love, People Get Ready. They added the People Get Ready title because it contained elements of Curtis Mayfield's hit, People Get Ready. Check it out, One Love. Amongst all of the violence, Bob Marley left Jamaica in 1976 and relocated to England, and he continued to record hits. In 1977, Marley was diagnosed with skin cancer on the foot, actually his toe, and doctors recommended that the toe be amputated, but Bob Marley refused. After being arrested for cannabis possession, Marley returned to Jamaica in 1979. In 1980, he played a show for 100,000 fans in Milan, Italy, and then two sold out shows at Madison Square Garden. He then played his final shows at the Stanley Theater in Pittsburgh, but his health began to fail as cancer spread throughout his body, and on May 11, 1981, the 36-year-old legend passed away. There are so many great Bob Marley songs, but for our final selection on Bob Marley, I chose Get Up, Stand Up. Get Up, Stand Up is one of the great protest songs, and it really encapsulates Marley's message as a political songwriter. The tune was written by Marley and Peter Tosh, and it was included first in the 1973 album, Burnin'. Marley wrote the lyrics while touring Haiti, as he was moved by the extreme poverty he witnessed. Bob Marley would perform the song frequently in concert, and this version comes from the 1975 live album. This live version has a faster tempo than the album releases. Get up, stand up. Okay, so now let's shift gears and talk a little bit about dub music or dance hall music. Many rock steady slash reggae producers and engineers were also DJs, and they began experimenting with instrumental tunes by adding echo and other studio effects. They also began adding lyrics to these tunes. 
This became known as dubs, D-U-B-S, or doubles. Jamaican dub music has a direct connection with American early hip-hop and rap. The concept of sampling and altering materials to create a new song comes directly from this dub music. Now, in the 1980s, the economic situation in Jamaica got better, and DJs began to get new equipment and systems leading to what was known as sound system battles, in which DJs would compete against each other. Often, the added lyrics to dub music dealt less with social and political issues, but more with sex, partying, and sometimes violence. Lee Scratch Perry is one of the pioneers of dub music. He's really one of the great individuals of popular music. His career began as a producer when he started working for Amalgamated Records, and then he formed his own label called Upsetter Records in 1968, and he began recording music with studio musicians and just named the band The Upsetters. So he became known for his unique approaches to sound and production and his eccentric look and behaviors. Perry has had a long career as a producer and a recording artist. The song we're going to listen to is called Freedom Dub, and it's characteristic of Perry's usage of extreme echo and overall production techniques. Yellow Man was one of the pioneers of dancehall music. He grew up in Kingston, Jamaica, and was shunned because of his lighter skin, He was an albino, hence the name Yellow Man. He began his career as a DJ, and Yellow Man came to fame in Jamaica in the late 70s and early 1980s. He did take some flack over the sexual innuendos and bravado in his music. Yellow Man's second album, hope I get this right, is Zunga 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 Zang from 1982. And the title song, I'll say it again, Zunga 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 Zang, was instrumental to his success. So let's check it out. And just for kicks, I'm gonna say it once more. Zunga, 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 zang. By Yellow Man, check it out. This next track is Shaggy's It Wasn't Me. Shaggy is a Jamaican rapper and singer and songwriter connected to the dancehall style. He's been nominated for seven Grammy Awards and has won one for Best Reggae Album. Born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica, Shaggy moved to New York City at the age of 18 in 1988, and he then enlisted in the Marine Corps. In 1993, he scored his first hit with O Carolina, and he never looked back. His 1995 single, Boombastic, has had huge crossover success. Then he released the album Hot Shot in 2000, which hit number one on the Billboard charts. Two major hits from the album include Angel and It Wasn't To Me. It Wasn't To Me talks about a cheating boyfriend who gets caught. The lyrics feature the singing of Rick Rock, who asks his friend Shaggy for advice on getting caught cheating. Shaggy's advice throughout the song is to deny everything, no matter what, just deny it. Check it out, Shaggy's It Wasn't To Me. Sean Paul is another Jamaican dancehall star from Kingston, Jamaica. The musician comes from mixed race that includes Jamaican, Chinese, and Jewish roots. His father was a pro water polo player, but was arrested for manslaughter when Paul was only 15 years old, serving only four years of that sentence, and he was released for good behavior. Sean Paul himself was also a gifted water polo player and played for the national team from the ages of 13 to 21. But in 1994, he looked more towards music and began hanging out daily at recording studios. In 2000, he released his first album, Stage One, but it received little fanfare. It was not until 2002 where he became noticed for his album, Duffy Rock, which reached number 12 on the Billboard charts. Duffy Rock eventually sold 6 million copies. His next album, The Trinity, also sold well, 4 million copies. Paul continued to release albums and collaborate with some of the most famous pop artists in the world. 
His first big hit was Gimme the Light, which speaks of his penchants for smoking marijuana. Paul displays in this song his ability to spit lyrics quickly, which is a signature style of Sean Paul's music. Check it out. Gimme the Light by Sean Paul. The music of Jamaica, particularly reggae, has been fused into the music of many European and American bands and musicians. One of the musicians that helped to popularize reggae was blues rock legend Eric Clapton, with his version of Bob Marley's I Shot the Sheriff. The song was first released in 1973 on the Whalers album Burning. The lyrics are about government interference in regards to marijuana usage and the narrator's violent response to being told that he can no longer grow his crops. In 1974, Eric Clapton released his own version on his hit album, 461 Ocean Boulevard. Marley's version never charted in the US, but Clapton's reached number one. Now for a guitar slinger like Clapton, it's a surprise that the song does not even have a guitar solo. Check it out, Eric Clapton's version of I Shot the Sheriff. One of the most popular bands to incorporate reggae music was the 1980s English rock group The Police. The Police included Sting on lead vocals and bass, Andy Summers on guitar, and the great Stuart Copeland on drums. The Police formed in London in 1977 and grew to fame as part of the New Wave movement. In addition to reggae music, the band also blended punk and jazz into their unique sound. The group's 1979 hit, Walking on the Moon, displays their affection for the reggae style. Even though it is one of the group's most played songs, it has never charted in the US, but reached number one in the UK and Ireland. Some other popular reggae rock acts include Men at Work, Sublime, No Doubt, 311, Slightly Stupid, and the group Bad Brains. Check this one out. The police walking on the moon. Ska music also found a resurgence with the popularity of bands like The Specials, Madness, Real Big Fish, Fishbone, The Mighty Mighty Bostones, Less Than Jake, Streetlight Manifesto, Catch-22, Goldfinger, and Rancid. And some of these bands would blend ska with punk to create a new style known as ska punk. One such song is the impression that I get by the Boston-based Mighty Mighty Bostones from 1997 on their self-titled release. According to songfacts.com, lead singer Dickie Barrett and bassist Joe Gittleman wrote the lyrics after attending a funeral for a friend's brother. The lyrics are as such, have you ever been close to tragedy or been close to folks who have? Have you ever felt a pain so powerful so heavy you collapse. No? Well, I never had to, knock on wood, but I know someone who has, which makes me wonder if I could. The impression that I get by the mighty, mighty Bostones. Take a listen. All right, my friends, there we have it. We learned a little bit about the music of Jamaica, and certainly we are better for it. I want to thank you for listening, and I hope you continue to listen to this program. To learn more about the podcast, go to 30albumsfor30years.com. And you can also check out my book, A History of American Music, 1750 through 1950, an origin story. And that's available through Kendall Hunt Publishing. Now, before I say my goodbyes, I did want to present just one more track to you. This comes from pianist Monty Alexander. Monty Alexander is a jazz pianist from Kingston who helped blend the music of Jamaica with instrumental jazz. And this track is Stir It Up, one of Bob Marley's songs from Alexander's 1999 album, Stir It Up, the music of Bob Marley. So enjoy the track, and together, let's keep this music alive. 